يا من أجبت دعاء نوح فانتصر وحملته في فلكك المشحون يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك إن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back for a few words Dhul Qa'ada Day 23 As I've mentioned previously Dhul Qa'ada being a very important and sacred month in preparation for Dhul Hijjah and Dhul Hijjah contains the most important one of the most important elements of Islam the fifth pillar which is the pillar of Hajj and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually sanctified the month of Dhul Hijjah to such an extent that the month before and the month after has have also been sanctified, have also been given this sacredness in preparation, in exaltation of Dhul Hijjah itself. So, so much importance, so much emphasis has been played. And one of the reasons that the ulama of the past, they've actually told us that the Hajj is something that contains all the other four pillars. Someone cannot come do Hajj unless they actually take in the Shahada, unless they believe in the Shahada, unless they testify continuously and they do the Talbiyah continuously and each time they are actually glorifying, they are taking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And within the days of Hajj, of course, a person has to do the second pillar of Islam, which is Salah. And at the same time, throughout the entire duration, from the first of Hajj all the way to the day of Yawm al-Arafah, a person uh, would actually be involved in the fasting. And that fasting is another pillar of Islam. So the person is involved in fasting. And from the beginning, throughout the entire month of Dhul Hijjah, the rewards of Sadaqah is increased. The rewards of Sadaqah is given many folds. And this is the reason why many, many people are encouraged to give, donate, in, and uh, give Sadaqah as much as possible. And Sadaqah, a form of charity, the third pillar of Islam, Zakat, is also as a form of charity involved here. Hence, the ulama, they say that Hajj is something is so special, so important, so esteemed that it contains all the four others. And this is something that we need to understand the reality, the gravity. Let us prepare for this. Let us get understand how much this is loved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This journey to Makkah al-Mukarrama, the Baytullah, the house of Allah, there's two dimensions. There's, a, there's the physical aspect where a person has to make all the preparations of the world in terms of being prepared, in terms of sacrificing their time, health, wealth and uh, money and all the preparations, travel arrangements to actually get to that destination. That is one element. And the other element is the spiritual journey. The spiritual journey where it's the journey of the most sacred of all journeys. A journey wherein it starts at a very distant and remote place away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the destination itself is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the important aspect is the external and the internal combined together which gives a person's acceptance of Hajj. This is very very important for the people not only who do Hajj but also for the people who are in their own homes, who are residents in their own countries, in their own places but they observe the sacredness of Dhul Hijjah and this is something that we all need to be aware of. And it is worth noting that that very spot where the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands, that land, that plot of land was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before the creation of Adam alayhi salam. And then the ulama, they tell us that after Adam alayhi salam came, he visited that spot and all the other major prophets, they all visited that spot because they were aware of the sacredness of that area, that spot, that part, plot of land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen. And directly above that, Baytul Ma'amur, where the, in the heavens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has another place um, located in above, directly above the Kaaba, Baytullah. And in the heavens, the tawaf is not done by human beings, but it is done by angels. 70,000 angels every single day. And after one angel does, does the tawaf, that angel will never again get the opportunity of doing tawaf because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produces so many thousands and thousands and since the beginning of creation millions and billions and every day until the very last day angels will be still, still be performing the tawaf 
And we know that later Ibrahim came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him the exact spot. Ibrahim built up upon that spot a structure that was the structure where the whole of humanity would point towards to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even all the way to the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and even all the way till now. So this is something that was heavenly chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thousands, hundreds and thousands of years ago. So under normal circumstances, people throughout the entire world, they would have been preparing and they would have actually bought their tickets and got their visas uh, months in advance. Uh, some of these agencies, they get sold out uh, a year in advance. There are some Muslim countries where people are in a queuing system 10 years in advance, 15 years in advance, subhanAllah. We know of people in places like Indonesia where heavily Muslim populated areas and countries are, where people have to book themselves uh, over a decade in advance and they are chosen, it's like a lottery system, if they're lucky, if they're fortunate enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and ability to be fortunate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the fortunate ones to be able to visit the house of Allah, Baytullah, the sacred land, the sacred spot where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us from far away lands to the vicinity of his beloved area, beloved spot where he says that this is a very important spot and we visit that important spot. Be in preparation. What are the things that we need to do? How do we prepare? What kind of actions do we need to take? What are the things that we need to do more of? What are the things that we need to do less of? And what things that should we not do at all? These are the things that we need to approach the ulama. We need to ask the scholars, how do we prepare? What do we need to do? So let us make that connection with the ulama and through them the connection with the sahaba, through them the connection with our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And via Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And without this chain and without connecting ourselves to the true essence of the deen through the scholars, through the people who are experts, through the people who have spent their entire lives through and that generation and that chain of, you know, that chain of sacrifice and that chain of knowledge that goes all the way back, we will be completely lost. Furthermore, I'll elaborate on that point uh, in future inshallah, but as, as of now, we have almost just under seven days to prepare. Let's get cracking. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.